Belarus, Belize, Belize, I don't know how to say that. And today I'm here with my March 2018 wrap up. I read a total of 11 books so we're just gonna get straight on into it so this video is not a million minutes long. So without further ado let us get started. <sighs> the first book I actually read was a graphic novel and it is Wires and Nerve by Marissa Meyer. I ended up giving this a 4 out of 5 stars it was such a great addition to the Lunar Chronicles. I absolutely love that series, so it was great to see all my favorite characters again. I'm only giving it a 4 out of 5 stars because I wasn't really a huge fan of the art style. It was just pretty much blue and white, and I personally like lots of bright colors, so it's just a personal preference, but overall it was a super fun fast-paced read and I loved seeing everybody again and I need the second one just so I can see all my little baby angel unicorns. The next book that I read was called Find You in the Dark and it was by Nathan Ripley. I ended up giving this a three out of five stars. The book follows a man named Martin Reese who buys stolen police files from another police officer and he uses the information in these files to basically hunt down the bodies of serial killer victims. He calls the bodies in anonymously and he basically just taunts the police officers for not doing their job. A young detective named Sandra Whittle has started calling him the finder and she's made it her personal mission to find him and arrest him. And that's when Martin discovers that he is way in over his head when he starts getting messages from a person who is not entirely happy that he is digging up his work. Martin finds his family in danger and he's an able to turn to the police for any help so it's basically the story of him trying to get out of the shit show that he's started. It was entertaining but it wasn't anything special in my opinion. I was going to give it a 2.5 out of 5 stars but the ending was really what brought it up for me. It became a lot more fast-paced. Most of the story it was very slow and I was just like okay like can some kind of action happen please but nothing, nothing happened until the end. The whole concept of the book was really interesting to me. I personally find serial killers really interesting, so when I read the synopsis of the book, I was like, heck yes, this is gonna be right up my alley, but it definitely fell short for me. I couldn't connect with any of the characters. I didn't really care what happened to any of them. It was like, okay, you're gonna die, great. I also found the writing style to be very choppy, and they also used the R word a lot as an insult, and personally, I ain't about that, so it definitely brought the book down for me. But again, that's just a personal preference, so. The next book I read was The Beauty and the Beast Lost in a Book, and this is by Jennifer Donnelly, and this is like a spin-off of The Beauty and the Beast, but I ended up giving this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. It takes place in the same timeline as Beauty and the Beast, but it is after Belle switches places with her father, and she's living with the Beast, and he wants her to be happy, so he ends up gifting her his library, and when she's in this library, she discovers a book called Nevermore, and she quickly discovers that she can actually go inside of the book and live this fairy tale life in the book but as she spends more time in Nevermore she doesn't know who she can trust and who she can't trust and it's basically the story of her navigating Nevermore. I just personally really like Beauty and the Beast so it was really fun to have a spin-off story from it. I really liked how it followed the movie timeline and it was just another story within that and I also really liked being able to see all my favorite characters again and also some new characters. Overall it was just a super cute fluffy quick read so if you guys like Disney and Beauty and the Beast, I'd recommend it. The next book I have is called Slam by Walter Dean Myers, and I ended up giving this a 2 out of 5 stars. The book follows a 17-year-old boy named Greg who his friends call Slam because he's a basketball star. He really wants to make it to the big leagues, but unfortunately he doesn't have the grades to make it. And he also has a huge temper, so when his principal tells him that unless he gets his grades up, he's not going to be able to play basketball anymore, he fights back. I think this is a a really good book for somebody who actually understands basketball because they use a lot of lingo that if you don't play you're gonna have a no idea what the heck is going on half the time 
personally I've been playing since I was four so I knew exactly what was happening and when they were describing the games I knew what everything meant but if you are not familiar with basketball like you'd be screwed reading this book. I also just didn't really like the writing style. It was very confusing at times. It's told from Sam's point of view and just the way that it's written was very hard to follow so personally it just wasn't for me. The next book I have is Empress of a Thousand Skies and this is by Rhoda Beleza probably saying that heck a wrong. The book follows Rhiannon and she is the last surviving heir to the throne after her family was all killed. So seeking revenge, Ri takes off on this journey in order to find the person who she believes killed her family. The book also follows Alyosha who is in the military and he actually has his own reality TV show and a lot of people discriminate against him because of his race. Ri narrowly escapes an assassination. The entire world believes that she is dead and Ali and ends up being the first suspect on the list and that forces him to go on the run and it's basically the journey of the two of them. I ended up giving this book a 3 out of 5 stars. It was entertaining but it, it felt very rushed in my opinion. It was kind of hard to follow the story at times and a lot of things weren't explained very well so most of the time I was just trying to figure out what the heck was even going on which was very frustrating. I really liked the alternating perspectives between Ali and Ri and I did like both of their characters. At times, Ri really pissed me off, but then other times I really liked her character. Ali was kind of a huge jerk, but for some reason I rooted for him the entire time. Unfortunately, I was able to call like the huge plot twist that was super obvious in my opinion, so that was kind of a downfall for me. Overall, like it was a quick fun read, but I don't really care about it. Like I'm probably not going to continue the series. The next book I have is The Innocent Wife and this is by Amy Lloyd and I ended up giving this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. The book follows a man named Dennis who was on death row for 22 years for the abduction and murder of a young little girl. He's now part of a documentary in order to tell his story and what happened all those years ago. The documentary causes a lot of controversy online and it catches the attention of a woman very far away in Britain named Samantha. Samantha and Dennis start writing to each other and they quickly fall in love and end up getting married. As the story continues to gain popularity from the public, Dennis is actually exonerated for his crimes and he ends up being released from jail. As they start their new life together, Sam learns a lot of new things about Dennis that she didn't know before and she starts to question how well she actually knows her husband. The plot behind the book was what really caught my attention. I've always been a huge fan of crime documentaries and anything to do with like serial killers and stuff like that. So I was very interested after I read the synopsis. Dennis was a great character. He was super creepy and I loved how I never knew exactly what he was going to do next. I didn't really care for Samantha. She was kind of annoying in my opinion. She was very self-conscious and she second-guessed literally everything, which like in her situation is understandable, but it still just annoyed me to no end. The only major downfall I have for the book is the ending. It felt very rushed and I felt that it was very slow up until the point where like the huge climax happens but then the book was over and it was like I want more and I want to know what happens to the characters but it just ended very abruptly so it was kind of disappointing but overall like it was entertaining while I read it. And then the next book I have is called Past Tense and this is by Star Spider which I still think is the dopest name ever but this follows Julie Nolan who is a freshman in high school and she's in love with her best friend Lorelai. She's been in love with her since ninth grade. But Lorelai is very oblivious to this fact and she's trying to set Julie up with her ex-boyfriend named Henry who Julie really does not like. To make things more interesting, Julie comes home one day from class and she sees her mother is just frozen in place and she asks her mom what's wrong and her mom actually tells her that she doesn't have a heartbeat and that she died. So it's basically the story of Julie trying to navigate between grade 9 and her feelings for Lorelai and her dead mother. I ended up giving it a 3 out of 5 stars. I thought it was cute and the premise was nice but it was very slow in my opinion. Nothing really happened. Lorelai pissed me off to no end. Julie was very naive which bothered me because I just wanted to shake her and be like are you stupid? The only character I really liked was Henry. He was a sweet little cinnamon roll who was so loving and caring towards Julie and I was just like my heart. But overall like I don't think it was anything special. It was 
fun while it lasted, but it's definitely not going to be anything memorable for me. And then the final four books that I have, I've actually have a video up for reviews on them separately, so I'm just going to name them and y'all can go watch that video if you're interested to hear my full thoughts on them. But they're four graphic novels. The first is Speak by Laurie Hulse Anderson, five out of five stars. I loved this one. The next one is The Prince and the Dressmaker, and this is by Jen Wang. I gave this a four out of five stars. The next one is In Real Life, also by Jen Wang and Cory Doctorow, and I gave this three out of five stars. And then the final one is Hermes, and this is The Tales of the Tricksters by George O'Connor, and I gave this one a 3.5 out of 5 stars. Alright guys, so that was my March 2018 wrap-up. Let me know down below if you've read any of these and what you thought of them, and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!